So when you first moved to Atlanta, did you have any expectations of what the city would be like and what you could get out of it personally? Uh, honestly, I ain't had no expectations on the city just because, like, I know you can't expect nothing from nobody, period. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I know I can't go to a, a city and expect nothing. You know what I'm saying? So what I what, what I guess I would say more is like what I expected out of myself before moving here. I did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so, like yeah. I, I you know what I expected like for myself to be able to come out here and do. I was able to do. You feel me? So that was. That was lit. Okay. So what do you think your biggest challenge was uh, with getting adjusted to being here? Uh, just getting used to the family, being back home, like all of my family back home, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, figuring out how to really talk on the phone again, because like, I've, I've never been a big talker on the phone to nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, except for when we was like 12 years old, 13 years old, in the laundry room, talking all night on the phone, to, you know? But, <laughs> nah, other than that, like, it was hard just adjusting to, you know, trying to find time to make phone calls, uh, being okay with being on the phone was, when your family's all around you, you don't never need to be on the phone, like with your family, you know what I'm saying? Like all day. So it's like you getting that time physically with them, you feel me? And then I always looked at being on the phone as a waste of time before moving to Atlanta. So for me to sit on the phone for two hours, an hour, three hours, 30 minutes, I'm feeling like I'm wasting opportunity of my day to be, you know what I'm saying? To progress and stuff like that when that's a hard juggle because it's like you're not really wasting time if you're talking to your family and talking to your loved ones. But at the same time, when you're trying to grind, like, and it's, it's you kind of look at it like, it, you know what I'm saying? So that's the, that was the biggest adjustment out of anything. Like, the money, none of that stuff, like, none of that worried me really. It was just the adjustment of, like, leaving my family and trying to find time to like actually talk to them. You know what I'm saying? So um, a lot of people say that Atlanta is one of those cities where there's more opportunity, but then you hear a lot of stories about people coming to Atlanta and um, getting scammed or just basically just, you know, like falling and not making it and having to go right back to their city. And you've been here for years now. So uh, what would you say as far as, um, do you think that people play their cell phone opportunity or what do, what do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely, uh, people play this. I ain't even gonna say, yeah, people definitely play their cell phone opportunity, but it's even deeper than that because like, it's, it's, it's the lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Like, like how you asked me earlier about what did I expect out of the city? You know what I'm saying? Like, or what did I, did I expect anything from the city? Like, you know, like, that's what I feel like a lot of people do. You know what I'm saying? Like, they expect to come and get that Atlanta treatment and, like, get, be a part of that Atlanta lifestyle. And, you know, I remember I had somebody say to me, what's the Atlanta lifestyle? I'm really like, you know, y'all have fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, you can't be offended by that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's some it's some hustlers out here, some scammers out here, it's a whole bunch of everything out here, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I've never been in a place where I've seen so many entrepreneurs. Especially, you know what I'm saying, like my skin color. So it was like it's dope because it's like everybody in any hood, any suburban, I don't care where you from, like if you in a group of people you gotta crab in the barrel type of thing going on with somebody in that group, you know what I'm saying? And so when you, if you make it out here, 
if you get the, a chance to make it out here, like to come out here, live out here, a lot of them people that you was rocking with, they still got the same mindset, one. So that's, that's never a good thing. Like when you leaving with energy that's gonna follow you. Like if you leave a situation, you need to leave the situation. A lot of people leave and let energy follow them. You know what I'm saying? So you here in Atlanta, but you got them crab in the barrel group of friends still you talking to, you you interacting with, you trying to impress online. You know what I'm saying? So when you could have went out and did this, this, and third, you know what I'm saying? That would have benefited you. You trying to keep up with the Joneses or you trying to entertain that crab in the barrel bucket of friends that you got. You know what I'm saying? It's not really your friend. You trying to entertain the social media. So if you move to Atlanta, what you going to post? You got to post that you in Atlanta. You ain't just in Atlanta. You ain't going to be at the gate. You going to be at the club. You going to be over here. You going to be over there. You know what I'm saying? You going to be where it's quote unquote popping it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's people's biggest problem with, uh, with coming out here and what opportunity is like, I've never, like I just said, I've never seen so many entrepreneurs in one place be successful. You know what I'm saying? So if we have all of these successful entrepreneurs, how could you come out here and fail? It's because you didn't come out here to be an entrepreneur. You came out here to live the lifestyle. So that opportunity, I wouldn't even say they pass it up. I said that they never even wanted it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you came out here for that opportunity, that opportunity is everywhere out here. And as much as you got that crab in the barrel bucket of friends that you got back home, that you supposed to leave and not let follow you in a sense, you can add a whole new group of people out here that's in the same lane that you in and want to see you do good, it's filled with opportunity. Or it's filled with the Atlanta lifestyle, you know, which a lot of people come here for. So people got to be correct with themselves first. And people lie to themselves. They lie and say they come here for opportunity. Nah, you coming out here to be a part of the Atlanta lifestyle. And you thought you was going to make an opportunity from that. No, like you just got the same, you got the same amount of chances making it on social media. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a lot of people popping here. It's a lot of people that got shit going on here, real shit going on here. You can't just come out here with nothing going on and think you're going to be the part, be somebody that's separated from a group of people. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, you come out here for the wrong. That's why people say that. Because them same folks, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you they was in the club more than they should have been. Whoever said it. And if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong whatever. You ain't going to be able to pull no receipts on me to show me that I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you pull your bank statement, but people ain't going to want to show that. You know what I'm saying? So I would love to show mine if anybody wants to see me. I'd love to show y'all that I'm not in the clubs. I'm not doing this stuff. You know, I'm not spending my money on that type of stuff. I spend my money on investments and business and stocks and real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like, my stupidest purchase is, is this. You know, like, earrings, grill, like, chains. Like, this, these are my stupidest purchases. But stuff like this is my best purchase because me and my girl make this. You know what I'm saying? So it's just... Whatever you see me in, I made. So when I'm out, again, opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Come here for the Atlanta lifestyle. You probably didn't went to Lenox Mall. You probably didn't spent thirteen hundred on clothes that you tucking the uh, tucking the tag in so you could take it back. You know, you probably doing a whole bunch of silly shit that you shouldn't be doing, and that's gonna lead you. You know what I'm saying? To being unsuccessful. You feel me? Now, if you take that same $1,300, right, and you put 15 of it in the Walmart, go to Walmart, just get you a, a it ain't got to be what you rocking for sure, you know what I'm saying? But it just, so you can see what's up. You know, get you this little sweatpants, little hoodie, little t-shirt, shorts, you know what I'm saying? You ain't spent nothing but $15. Go to the vinyl store. Get you one sheet of vinyl. 
make it work. That's how I tell somebody, make that one roll make work. You know, it's like 12 inches, 24, 12 by 24, 12 by 36, make it work. You know what I'm saying? But again, that's half off usually, so you spent like maybe $7.99 in there for that. So out of the gutter, $20, $22, you made your own outfit. And then when you step out, you're walking billboard. You can market yourself. Somebody might say, I like that outfit. You can then tell them, ah, right, thanks, man. You know, I made this. They might ask you then how much it was. You can tell them whatever, because you made it. So if you want to just get your money back, tell them $22. You want to make some profit, tell them 30 That's eight. You know what I'm saying? If you want to make a little more, tell them 40 If you want to see, see a chain, tell them 60 If you want to believe in yourself, and it might not come as fast, but you believe in yourself and you believe this is what it's worth, charge them 100 charge them 2 charge them whatever you feel your worth is worth. You know what I'm saying? Because... You're the owner of that. You're entitled to be able to put that price. Now, it might not sell as much, but if you believe in it, it will sell when it's supposed to. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of that whole thing, you still got, what, like $1,200 and like $78 left? You know what I'm saying? Instead of spending $1,300 in Linux, you got $1,200. Now you can put $78 towards marketing the thing. Got 1200 left. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it's hot. Now you can actually order the shit. So now you can get it, get in touch with a distributor. You know what I'm saying? A distributor or whatever. And now they, you can get a whole set of 40 outfits or whatever for 600 After shipment, it's 900 You still got $300 left over. And you about to sit here and come back three, four $4,000. You see what I'm saying? So I stay in my own shit. You feel me? Like, I came out here and I succeeded. I'll praise the God first. Second, because I chose to succeed. People choose to do what they want and people choose to come out here and have fun. I have fun being successful. It put a smile on my face making money. You know, it put a smile on my face helping other people make money. You know what I'm saying? So, for anybody to ever disrespect Atlanta, and I'm not even from here, for anybody to disrespect Atlanta and say that it's a scam, it's bogus, it ain't what it's it, you just ain't do it right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you shouldn't probably never came here, that's why you went back to where you came from. Like, because you shouldn't never came. You know what I'm saying? And it don't make me no different from nobody because I succeeded. The only thing that make me different from people is how hard I work. I like I tell people all the time I put my work ethic against anybody's work ethic. Like I don't give a damn about your bank account. I don't give a damn how strong you is. I don't care about none of that. I got one of the best looking bodies. Like I don't care about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I care about how hard you work. And I can almost put my last dollar on it every time against anybody that I'm outworking because I want to. That's my choice. You're going to eventually take a break and say, I'm tired. I'm not. I outworked you that day. You're going to eventually go to the club and celebrate whatever you did. I'm not. That's when I outworked you that night. You're going to eventually take somebody to a dinner or do something. That's cool. That's nice. It's generous. It's thoughtful. But I'm not. I'm going to outwork you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I never cared about the other stuff. I just cared about my stuff. And my stuff is my family, my business, my career, or whatever I choose. You know, like that's my stuff. All this other stuff, man, that's man-made, world-made, woman-made, whatever you want to say, but it ain't necessarily, you know, made for us. You know, it's made for us to spend money on it, but it ain't necessarily made for us. You know what I'm saying? And so, knowing, like, I'd rather appease, to, appease my likes and what I want to do, that's why I came out here and I'm still out here. You know what I'm saying? And again, of course, I'll praise God on that, but it's just, that's why 
I'm still out here. You know what I'm saying? Strong, because I came out here for opportunity, and that's what I got. A lot of people say that Atlanta's not a relationship city, and you are out here with a whole family of your own, um, being a family man. What do you think some of the challenges have been for yourself, or if not for yourself, can you point out why it's a challenge for others? Uh, yeah, because, like, ain't nothing to challenge to you unless you ain't work hard enough. You know? So, again, I can outwork. <laughs> like, I can outwork all of them relationships. I can outwork all of them people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that helps my relationship work. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, what they wasn't doing, I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you saying to this other girl, saying to this, to your homie, I'm saying to my girl. You know what I'm saying? And, and we, we working through it no matter how hard the conversation is. You feel me? And so, well, a lot of couples out here do that I've noticed is they just together because they want somebody to be entitled to or to have entitlement over. It's not real. It's lust with a title. You know what I'm saying? And when you get lust with a title, you get cheating, you get all of that shit going on. And it's even worse when you get less with a title, with entitlement. It, it Now you, you gonna go do your thing, but when this person do their thing, you wilding on them. Like, you been doing your thing this whole time, but somebody step off and do their thing one time, you wilding on them. You, you feel entitled to judge somebody for something that you're doing. And what make it even worse, you probably won't even let them know that that's what you're doing. And that's why you uptight. That's why you're doing whatever you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because you are you want entitlement over that person. You damn near want to own that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's people. It's not clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we own this. Like, this is my clothes, but my girl is not. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I don't own her. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like some people look at it like, that's my chick, I own her. That's my, I own him. Now, they not saying it like that. But like I always said, actions are so much louder than words. So you gonna come out your mouth and be like, I don't feel like I I, I own my nigga. I don't feel like I own my girl. I'm be like, all right. But I'm gonna ask you some questions after that, right? And throughout them questions, them series of questions, through what you tell me about how you move, not about how you think, but how you move, like what you do. When you answer me on how you move, that's when I can read you. And a lot of them people, it's they the same. They seem like, the, it's like that whole don't judge a book by a cover thing. I don't have to judge you if I know you. So at this point, it's not passing off prejudgment. It's, I know your type. I know you. You know what I'm saying? So you can tell me all day, hey, don't get no girlfriend out here. Don't. It's like bringing sand to a beat. You boom, boom, boom. But if I know your mindset, come on now. Like, that's why you messing up. That's why you ain't successful in it because you have this type of mindset. The reason why I'm successful is because I got this type of mindset. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, it wasn't hard at all. Like, it was just more or less wanting to go hard. You know what I'm saying? For my family, for my girl, and like, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that, you know, uh, that they ain't have to worry about nothing. You know what I'm saying? And you making sure that multiple people in your life ain't worried, you worry a lot. You know what I'm saying? so much worry that you can't worry about somebody that's not got nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? So when you see a new chick or you see a son that you might think you want to catch a vibe with, you're going to think to yourself, like, why? And if you just ask yourself that a lot of times, you'll stop whatever action you're about to do because there's not a reason why to do something like that if 
you're carrying on something that's real with somebody and they carrying that out with you. You know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, of course we all know why. Because we thinking what I, you know, thinking what I think, you know what I'm saying? But it's just, at the end of the day, it's like, if you understand being a man and thinking what you did, you know there's two different things. You know what I'm saying? It's men that think what they did, but being a man and doing a man thing, you're not thinking like that. You're thinking with your mind. You know what I'm saying? You're thinking with your heart. You're thinking with your actions. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're thinking about who it's going to affect. You know, if there's children involved, you're not just cheating on the girl. You're cheating on the kids, you know, because they, they getting cheated out of something. You know, if you, if you break up, you just cheated your kids out of your time with you. You know what I'm saying? You just cheated yourself out of it. Like, so you, when I mean, you cheat, you're not just cheating. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a big difference. So I think that, like, make it easy. You know what I'm saying? It's knowing that I got something that I'm working, act, act that I'm actually working hard for to build into. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that make a big difference for sure. You say that the growth of your success has a lot to do with being here, or do you think that you could have done, do you think you could have got to this level staying where you were? I could have, but people around me wouldn't let me. And is that because they don't have the same mindset as you. You yeah. feel like they were just dragging you down. Yeah, and I would allow it unwillingly, but willingly, because they're my partners. Uh, that's who I know, that's who I grew up with. So instinct, and just off of instinct, you gonna be there. But you don't realize how much being there for someone other than yourself can damage yourself. You see what I'm saying? So without getting away, I probably would have never stopped damaging myself by trying to help other people. You know, because I'm a very selfless person. Like, anybody that know me know, I'm going to help you out. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, what you going through, I'm going to help you out. You know what I'm saying? But going, but, but doing, like, and that ain't just with anybody. It's my dogs, of course. But it's just when you keep doing the same thing, saying the same thing, trying to teach the same thing, and people ain't changing, and they just got that backbone of having you there to tell them right from wrong or tell them that they messing up but they don't really care enough to change and you don't really care enough to stay adamant enough that if they don't change to stop kicking it around them like if you just let shit go and they just let shit go you gonna let your career go you gonna let your your drive go you gonna let everything of yours go you know what i'm saying because you too focused on everything around you instead of yourself and coming out here even though I, you know, had to worry about a lot of people, coming out here was the first time I worried about myself because I wouldn't have came out here if I wasn't worried about myself. But I knew me worrying about myself for the first time in my life would change the effects that I would have on people for the rest of my life and for the rest of their life. So it was needed for me to care about what I needed to do versus the shit that I like to do or willing but unwilling type shit to do. You know what I'm saying? I noticed on that there blunt you have, um, looks like you patched two papers together. Uh, you want to tell me about your technique on that? Usually, you know, yeah, usually I don't, I don't do all right, but you know, I ain't know how long the interview was going to be, so I put two of them together. You know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just... I usually have a, a nice size one, you know, it's, it's one usually, but I ran out of them on the way, you know, so when they had to just put two small ones together, you dig, but yeah. It looks very neat. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, authentic right here. And we gonna have our own papers coming out, our own tips and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like right now we, I ain't even gonna promote Say Who I'm Smoking cause they ain't paid me to do it, but if they pay me to do it, y'all see this in the advertising, y'all see, Take the labels off the water, but if you ain't paying me, <laughs> I'm not showing you off, man. 
I got to make my money for my family. It's inflations right now. <laughs> Oh shit! I got two papers, like two small papers together. Like, <laughs> talking about saving shit. <laughs> so, what advice would you give to anybody who um, is like young and like just now getting out on their own to just better themselves? What what advice would you give them? Save your money and, and invest. Because when you're young, you're not taught to do that. You talk to do everything else. You talk how to work. You talk how to be a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a friend, a brother, a sister. You, you, you talk how to be a man. You talk how to stay a child. You, you talk a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? But one of the major things that you ain't taught is how to save and invest your money. Saving your money. From people I hear that people from people all the time. I save my money. I save my money. You tell me I, I got good savings. What you invest in? Nothing. That's why I'm saving my money. For what? So I can have money. So you're not investing in Like You know what I'm saying? So it's like, people really don't know. It's, 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 it's very important for both of those things to happen. It's important for you to save your money. And then with that money that's being saved, it's, it's important for you to spend that money on investing. You know what I'm saying? Because like I heard, the worst investment is still better than the best purchase. You know what I'm saying? Because once you purchase something, that's it. You're not making no money back from it. Like a lot of times. like so. And if you do make money back from it, it's depreciated money. You know what I'm saying? So stocks, real estate, you know, cars, whatever. You know, like just, ass just assets, basically, whatever. You can always make money back off of them investments. You know, they can always go higher than what you bought them for. Of course, they can go lower too, but you stick around. You're not in it. You're not trying to spend this money, right? This money you was going to save in your shoebox or in your closet or under, under your bed for five years, right? You know, like that was your intent. You know, you don't want to give the money to the bank because you know the bank going to do this and tax money off of it and all this. So you got this money put away. Okay, cool. If you was truly not intending on spending that money, put all of that money into investment. Put every single dollar that you make that you would have saved into investments. You feel me? Because at that point, you just sparked a reason that you would be able to be retired in five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, whatever your rate is of how you saving your money and investing it. That's how fast you can retire and have a passive income. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 what I would suggest to any young person, which I'm gonna have plenty of videos about, you know, my stocks and proper investments and real estate and all of this stuff, just why I got into it, how I got it. I'm gonna have some videos up on that, you know, uh, on my page. And I already got one now, you know, talking about how I made like a thousand dollars in a day off of stocks, which is cool because you know I made a thousand, I made two thousand in a day sometimes off of stocks, sometimes I didn't lost a thousand in a day, you know. But that's all off, just is me being transparent, just all off of also uh, learning, you know what I'm saying. But what I did to lose eight hundred in a day or a thousand in a day, I can teach you. So you don't do that, you know what I'm saying. But what I did to make back two thousand that next day or, you know, a day before, whatever, I can teach you that too. You know what I'm saying? I can teach you when to get out, when to get in, when to stay in and stay still, and when to go ahead and sell your chips, but keep a little bit in it just in case to do a little something with it. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of different ways that you can make it happen. And so I'm trying to do that anyway, you know, enlighten the youth on what to do even before you graduate. Was it? I almost say it's too late if, when you graduate because you already set into damn near who you want to be. And if you ain't set into who you want to be, you even worse, like majority of America, I would say, trying to find out who you're going to be. You know what I'm saying? And get misled for a long time until you like 25, 26. Like, I don't like how my life going and want to make a change. You know what I'm saying? Like to avoid that, 
I would love to get my hands on the 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, you know what I'm saying, and work with them for years. Like, by the time they're 18, they're going to have investments, they're going to have savings, they're going to be buying a house for their first thing. They're not going to be buying an apartment. They're going to buy a house. Now, they might move into an apartment and rent their house out if that's what they chose to do, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, but they have options. And that's more or less what I want to give the youth is better options. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we, the options we got, we, we ain't good with. You know what I'm saying? Most generations anyway.